Hi, folks. This is Danny Turkovich from FBN. Um, we're still waiting on uh, some folks to join the webinar here. We're going to be getting started uh, at uh, 6 o'clock Central Time. So everybody hang tight for a few minutes. We'll let other people roll in, and then we'll get started in a few minutes. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, this is uh, Danny Turkovich with FBN. This is the webinar on uh, satellite imagery, which is a new feature that we just released in FBN. Um, we're going to start out um, with a quick poll um, that we're going to show up on the screen uh, right now and just take about a minute to fill that in uh, while we wait for a few more folks to uh, trickle in here. Okay, everyone, so we got the results of our poll in. Uh, so yeah, about 80% uh, not using satellite imagery right now and 20% that are using it currently. Uh, so great to see that, um, you know, hopefully be able to get a lot of uh, folks that are not currently getting a lot of value out of satellite imagery to um, see how to use this in FBN and hopefully this will help uh, improve uh, your operation this year. So uh, we're going to close out the results here and we're going to get started with the webinar on how to use satellite imagery. So for people that are at home and on the computer, um, probably be helpful if you actually logged into your FBN account and just followed along so that you can see it in uh, real time on your, on your side as well. It's always a lot more uh, meaningful with your following along with us. Um, so once you get into your account, I'll show, first show you how to get to the satellite imagery section. Um, first off, for anyone that is uh, looking at their FBN account and it does not look like what you're seeing here on the screen, that's likely because we have not uh, received your field boundaries and have not been able to build out your account um, with the field boundaries in your data. Um, so there's probably a big add data um, button that you're seeing in the middle of the screen right now. If you don't have that, 
Um, you can upload field boundaries there. You can uh, upload a field map, uh, just a PDF map, and we'll draw in those field boundaries for you. Or when you uh, upload your precision data, we will create your field boundaries for you. Once those field boundaries are created, then you'll be able to get access to satellite imagery and lots of other things. Uh, for other folks that already have their field boundaries created, uh, we're going to go into the mapping section here. And then uh, just go ahead and pick a field. And you can pick a field either from uh, clicking on one on the map here or over on the uh, left-hand field list. So I'm gonna go into a field, and then under the type, there's a new uh, uh, option in the picker here for satellites. So this is where satellite imagery is gonna be found. Um, the, the default image that's gonna load is always gonna be the most recent image that's captured. As you can see here, this image is all gray. That means that basically there were uh, clouds um, that were obscuring the satellite's view of the field when that image was taken. Um, so on this date, it's not really usable. You can see that we have a, um, a cloud identifying uh, algorithm that's basically uh, noticing that and calling out which of these images are actually um, uh, usable or not usable based on how many clouds um, are, are obscuring the image or, or not. Um, so look for those images that are green rather than red. Um, also, another th important thing to note is that the satellite imagery is, is really picking up the, the vegetation signatures, and we'll go into a little bit more detail on what it's actually uh, looking at. Um, what that means is that uh, this is going to be the most useful when there's actually uh, some crop that's already visible to the human eye um, that the, the uh, satellite will be able to pick up. So when it's bare ground, um, it's not really going to be uh, very useful. And so Actually, this uh, demo account here, which is in uh, central Illinois, um, these fields are, you know, uh, there's not really anything coming up yet. So we're actually going to go back to 2017 to show how this is, can be used where we actually have some data um, from a growing crop. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the absolute layer of the satellite imagery, and this is the uh, EVI index. EVI stands for Enhanced Vegetation Index. Um, you'll probably frequently hear uh, the term NDVI uh, used as well. Uh, NDVI and EVI are very similar. Um, they're basically calculating um, what is the, the vegetative biomass or the vigor of the crop. Um, and EVI is actually just a little bit of a, a better measurement because it corrects for some of the issues that NDVI has with um, picking up uh, particles um, in the air that can uh, mess up the, the measurement slightly. And so what this is actually looking at is it looks at two different light spectrums and compares them. Uh, these light spectrums are things that uh, plants uh, and vegetation um, absorb and reflect um, infrared uh, bands and the red uh, band. And it looks at the difference between those and that basically gives us a very good measurement and approximation of what stage um, the crop uh, is in, in terms of the crop growth, as well as the kind of relative vigor, vigor of the crop. And you can use this to compare uh, one field to the next, as well as look at variations within a field, uh, which can be very helpful for things like prioritizing what fields you might want to scout, and even being able to do a little uh, uh, scouting on parts of the field you might not be able to reach because um, the crop is too high. Um, so the EVI index, it goes from zero to one. Zero basically means uh, it's bare ground, um, there's not really anything going on, or the plants are uh, effectively you know, dead. This is what you would expect to see before the crop grows or after you've harvested. As the crop grows, you're going to start seeing the, uh, the EVI index is going to go higher and higher um, towards one, probably won't make it all the way to one. And then as the crop starts drying down, it's going to fall back down. And we're going to see this in action in just a second. The other thing you notice here are these brackets. This is showing you what is the overall variation of EVI values across this field. So if you have a wide bracket here, um, what that's saying is that there's a pretty wide variation going on in this field, which might be indications of uh, you know, parts of the field that are falling behind in terms of maturity um, or just some uh, a lack of uh, uniformity um, that could be due to issues you can control, could also be due to issues such as uh, soil type or uh, terrain or things of that nature. The tighter these bands are, the more uniform um, the crop vigor is. Um, um, as, um, as measured by the, the satellite imagery here. 
So let's look at what this looks like on a couple of their dates. So I'm gonna go back to July 20th. So you can see um, the color changed quite a bit and the, the range of EVI values also tightened up. So just within this five day period from the 20th to the 25th, there's a lot of growth that happened on this field. Um, but that growth wasn't all completely uniform. There are some areas that um, you know stayed at the the lower end of the values, and some that you know really that grew quite a bit. Um, let's go back to to June. So in June, you can see you know the crops you know just getting started. Um, the EVI values are showing the orange kind of signature. You can start to see some of these variations that are already showing up just within this range that's being shown here. Um, one of the things that you can do to get a better look and feel at what is going on within the field and look at these variations is you can click over to the relative um, scale here. So what, what this does is it really um, basically magnifies the variation that um, the satellite is seeing in terms of these EVI values. So we've taken this range of EVI values on the absolute scale and essentially just color coded it so that the top end of the range is now green and the bottom end of the range is now red. And so this is useful for looking at variation within a field. Um, it's probably not, uh, not, shouldn't be used to compare the relative signature between fields because the overall, the absolute values between fields might be different. But when you really wanna get into looking at what's going on within a field and identifying the areas that are, um, not doing as well um, or have lower uh, EVI values here, then uh, going over to the relative um, slider here will, uh, will help uh, identify what those areas are. Now, satellite imagery uh, never, the satellite itself is not gonna be able to tell you what's actually going on in the field. Um, you as the farmer have the, probably the best knowledge of what's going on. And this is basically a, a useful tool that can help pick up some things that um, maybe you uh, maybe you didn't see because you're just driving by in the truck. Um, maybe the corn's too tall um, or the plants are too tall for you to go walk to a certain part of the field. Um, maybe you just don't even want to drive out to the field because uh, it's 20, 30 miles away and you just, you're, uh, you're time crunched. Um, so you can hop on here and get a good idea of what's going on um, by, by using the satellite imagery. Um, we even had one grower uh, last year uh, while this uh, product was in beta that was in Nebraska that used this to identify several fields that had uh, clogged nozzles in their uh, their center pivots and they were able to go in there and uh, correct that problem and, and really save a decent portion of that field from uh, from getting too stressed uh, water stress and having really low yields. Um, so let's look at a few other uh, images here. Um, we're gonna go to um, back into July. As you can see, we're, um, the crop is growing. It's getting greener and greener. Um, here in August, we're probably getting close to the peak EVI values, and we're probably gonna start seeing it um, uh, drop back down. You can see it's now a little bit lower on the 29th. And as you get into September, now you can see the whole, um, the whole field is drying down quite a bit more. Um, so this is another thing that you can be using um, uh, for looking at fields as you get closer to harvest is looking at the uniformity of these fields as the crop is drying down. It might give you a good idea of uh, just how uniform are your fields in terms of harvest and should you be expecting a uniform moisture and things of that, that nature as you're, as you're going through. Um, now you'll notice here in some of these fields, we've got uh, these gray um, patches. Um, so this is basically our cloud detecting um, algorithm, which has found something that looks to be suspicious to a cloud or even a cloud shadow, um, which normally would uh, cast a kind of red or zero EVI signature on this field. Um, but rather than um, calling it out as being potentially problematic, we've colored it gray as being um, possible and likely that it's a cloud. And that's actually what we use this raw image um, uh, category for, is just to verify whether if there's something that is on the field like this gray patch, um, that is in fact a, a cloud or something that you, um, or if there is a red patch, you could do, use the raw image to see if it was a cloud that maybe we weren't able to detect. Um, we're able to detect quite a bit of clouds, but um, it's not 100% accurate. So if there is a very, very red spot in the middle of a field that looks completely unnatural to you, 
um, you know, it's always good to just go over here to the raw image, just double check that it's not a cloud that we weren't able to detect. Um, here you can see on this field, this is actually a cloud shadow. So um, if you zoom out, you'll probably be able to see um, this cloud here that is casting the shadow here. You'll notice that the image is a little bit different um, versus the background uh, here. That's because um, the background here, this is a Google Earth image, and this is actually using aerial photography, um, which is very high resolution um, compared to uh, the satellite imagery here at 10 meter resolution. This is probably, um, you know, uh, sub half a meter resolution. Unfortunately, the aerial imagery uh, is, you know, only flies every, for, from the imagery that Google is using, it's probably um, using it from several years ago or something like that. Um, so we can't get it at that, uh, that frequency. Um, so, um, you know, in terms of the imagery that we are getting uh, and where this, this imagery comes from, it comes from uh, the, the Sentinel-2 satellite. So the Sentinel-2 satellite is uh, managed by the European Space Agency. Um, and they're offering, they offer this imagery at uh, 10 meter resolution. And the expected refresh rate that you should expect it should be about five days. There's actually two satellites that are flying around and taking pictures of the of the Earth, which means that um, between those two satellites, they should be able to get a picture of um, of the Earth um, every every five days, every five to seven days. And in some cases, um, in some areas of the country, you might actually get quite a few more um, more frequent uh, imagery uh, images that are being loaded. And that's because there is a little bit of overlap between those two satellites. And so um, some people will get a little bit more lucky and be getting images every, every three days or so. But other people should be expecting five to seven days. From the time that the image is basically posted to um, the European Space Agency's database, um, it, we basically can turn it around in just over 24 hours. So it's, you'll probably notice a, about a 24 to 48 hour lag between when the image shows up in your account and the actual date that the, that image was taken. Um, the images that you can find in your account are gonna start in uh, 2017 for every field that you create uh, in FBN. The images will be a little bit more spotty in 2017. 2017 was a year that the, the satellite was uh, just coming online. And so um, they were working out some of their, their kinks and delivering the data. Um, uh, back down and so um, you can see here like in August. There's only uh, two images in August in 2017 in August of 2018 We will be expecting to get uh, you know four or five images um, during that month on that uh, you know five to seven day uh, cadence um, So again, you know the biggest big use cases here for satellite imagery is really to um, help prioritize scouting to be able to look at fields um, prior to actually going out there and scouting them. So you can save some time before driving out uh, in your truck. You can find areas of the field that might have some indications of uh, things going on that uh, might suggest, you know, pest or weed issues that you want to go investigate. Um, you know, sometimes you'll probably notice that a lot of the areas of the field that are showing up as um, not being as, uh, as healthy in the images might be due to, um, issues that you're very well familiar with because you know your field better than everyone else like soil or drainage. So actually on this field, there's actually two goalies that are going um, going down. And so that's actually what you're seeing in some of this, uh, this signature here. Um, but as a farmer, you'll probably have a very good idea of if what you're seeing uh, in terms of the poor crop health or the lower um, uh, EBI signatures that you're seeing are something that is worthwhile to investigate. And then you can prioritize which fields and what parts of those fields to, to go investigate further. Um, other use cases are, you know, for folks that have irrigation, um, this can be used to be uh, looking at uh, crop uh, uh, water stress, um, things like uh, looking at the areas where there might be clogged nozzles in irrigation systems. And then again, uh, for looking at um, the crop as it's drying down and understanding the kind of uniformity of the crop as it's, as it's drying down is, a, is another use case. Um, so, all of this is uh, live right now in accounts that uh, have um, fields built out. Um, if you don't have fields built out, you can upload your field boundaries via a precision file or by adding a, a just a picture of your fields drawn out on a map and we'll add them for you. 
Um, then it'll be about uh, once those fields get created in FBN, about 24 hours um, before your images should be showing up. Um, and we're going to be making improvements to the system throughout the year. Um, probably the biggest improvement that is in the works um, will be coming out later this summer. We'll be pushing this out um, into uh, the FBN app. Um, so right now, this is going to be only available on the website. But later this year, we do um, anticipate pushing this out into the mobile app um, so that folks can get access to it. Um, that's the the kind of high level overview of um, the satellite imagery feature. Um, if there are any questions, uh, feel free to write them in, uh, and we'll be on the line for a little while longer and answer any questions and go into more depth if there's certain aspects that people um, want to hear more about. Uh, so thanks everyone for the time, and uh, we'll stick around to answer any more questions. Yeah, so we had a question just about uploading data um, and uh, if we could explain a little bit more on and how to get data uploaded. So uh, for folks that want to learn more about uploading data, um, go to this My Data section up here and you'll notice this is broken out to uh, help identify the types of information that you can add and how to add it. So we break it into precision files, uh, contracts and invoices. This gives you um, access to a lot of the price uh, pricing tools that are in FBN. Um, and other files are, is kind of a catch-all for anything else you want to upload. Um, this could be things like the um, the boundary maps, um, even soil samples. Um, uh, we do a PDF reports if you have soil samples for your own farm, um, as well as just other spreadsheets that um, if you don't have precision data but want to add agronomic information to um, get analysis. Um, for folks that have precision uh, data, you can click here and this will kind of walk you through how to identify uh, what files to upload um, based on your type of monitor that you have. So, you know, if you have a Trimble um, monitor, you can look for this type of information on your, your desktop computer um, and then you can add the entire uh, contents of the folder. If you have uh, John Deere, you can actually integrate with John Deere um, if you have John Deere Operations Center. The place to do that is um, under this integrations tab. And uh, if you click here to connect with John Deere, that'll take you over to your My John Deere account. Um, it's a simple um, uh, process to just log in with your John Deere credentials, tell them that you want to share your information with FBN. That'll automatically start flowing over. We can take that information, uh, populate your field boundaries with uh, your John Deere data. Um, as well as pulling all that agronomic information as it's coming into your uh, John Deere operation center. Um, so yeah, this my data section is kind of your um, your central location to be adding all this information. Uh, for anyone that has other questions or still uh, having issues doing this, you can um, always get in touch with our data team and they are very familiar with all of these systems and can help do a backup if you have an APEX system uh, or S SMS system like that or help you understand how to uh, download that off of your computer. Uh, yeah, we had a question about uh, downloading the imagery data um, to do post-processing in GIS. So currently the system does not, um, there's no download function or anything like that. This is a, um, a tool to visualize the information within your FBN account, but there's no, there's no function to uh, download it. Um, uh, so, yeah, no, no downloading into a, a shapefile format at, at this time. Uh, yeah, question on the, uh, the mobile app with GPS capability. Yes, so the, the mobile app actually already does have GPS capability. So if you are um, using the mobile app and you're creating a record and you wanted to, let's say, drop a pin uh, where you're scouting, um, you can do that. You can drop the pin and you can see basically on the phone where um, or on the map where your phone is. Um, so you'll see the blue dot representing your GPS location. And then as we pull, as we roll out um, our mapping functions in the app later this year, then we will um, that will also have the uh, GPS function in it as well. So you could walk out into the middle of the field and um, see where you are on your satellite imagery map on your phone. 
Um, so for folks that, are, uh, that do not have the FBN app yet, um, in order to get access to the FBN app, you can go to either the Android or the iOS Play Store, or you can text uh, FBN uh, to the number 313131. Uh, we're about to put that uh, here in the chat box on the webinar, so you can do that. So again, that's text um, FBN to the number 313131 to get the FBN app, or go to the Play Store or the, um, the Apple Store. Uh, yeah, great question on adding a slider um, to compare maps. And yes, this is uh, definitely on the docket of things that we are going to be adding in here. Um, we we have this functionality on um, our, our other maps, such as the harvest map and you know seed seed variety map. So this is what we're talking about here: is this slider. We are going to be bringing that functionality into satellite maps. Um, we postponed it just so that we could get the uh, first version out here, um, but that's going to be under development here fairly soon, and we'll let people know um, when that added functionality comes out. Um, so a question just came in uh, about uh, how much biomass is, is necessary um, for the images to become useful, um, particularly if there's other, other crops out there. Um, that's a, you know, that's a great question. Um, you know, there definitely needs to be uh, more than, than, you know, just a, a couple inches or something like that. I mean, so in the very early stages of, of emergence for any crop, um, you know, the imagery is, is not going to be able to pick up as much as it will once the, the crop is already growing. Um, you know, you definitely should be able to use this for, for any crop. I mean, we have looked at uh, the satellite imagery um, at different stages of, the, of the, um, the growing stage, and it really does pick up the signatures of, of pretty much every crop um, as, as soon as it gets to a certain size. You know, I can't say with um, you know finite accuracy exactly what is going to be that growth stage for every single crop, um, but you definitely should be able to get um, useful images here um, at certain certain points of your um, your growing season for any crop. And for folks that are are you know using this for other crops, um, you know definitely let us know uh, you know how it's working, uh, how it's not working. Uh, we definitely would love to get feedback on this so that we can continue improving it to make sure that it um, fits in well with your operation. Okay, uh, any other questions out there? We'll, we'll stay on the line here for a few more minutes uh, in case other questions come in. All right, um, so that's it for the webinar today. Uh, thanks everyone for joining and hopefully uh, you learned something. Um, again, this is um, you know, a new feature in all the accounts. Please go check it out. Um, as crops start growing, this is gonna become more and more useful. As we develop um, more uh, capabilities around the satellite imagery feature, we'll be notifying folks. 
Um, but please go into your accounts and check it out. Um, if your crop is not um, in a growth stage where the satellites are picking it up or if it's too cloudy um, at this time of the year, go back and check out for your 2017 crop and see how it looks and provide us some feedback. Uh, always interested in hearing how we can improve things. So thanks a lot and uh, we're gonna sign off here.